what's my phone here? Hi, everyone. Welcome to our live stream series called Meet a Scientist. I'm Angelica, and I'm here at home today. But we would like to acknowledge that the Youth Biolab is located on Treaty 1 territory, the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe, Cree, OG Cree, Dakota, and Dene people, and on the homeland of the Métis Nation. In this week's live stream, we have a super special guest, friend to the Youth Biolab, director of the Youth Biolab, and my boss, Stephen Jones. Hi, Steve. Thanks for joining me today. How are you doing? Hi, Angelica. I'm great. It's a little weird to be on this side of the, uh, the interview table, but uh, or the virtual interview table, but I'm glad to be here. I'm not a real scientist. I just play one in the lab. Oh, please, please. <laughs> So we have the chat open. If you have any questions for Steve along the way, toss it in the chat. So Steve, we all know you as that super fun guy from the Youth Bio Lab, but this hasn't been your only job at the Albertson Research Center. Something most people don't know is that you started off as a research technician in 1999, working in Dr. Ian Dixon's lab on the Heart Research Floor. So here is young Steve right over here, and here's Dr. Dixon. So, we, both had, we both had so much hair. <laughs> you know, a shaved head is in right now. It is COVID. <laughs> <laughs> so Steve, can you start off by explaining to our viewers what a research technician is? Yeah, of course. And, and you know, the reason we're, we're kind of having this, this conversation together today is we kind of thought, you know, over the last, um, the, you know, as we've done these conversations over the last uh, bunch of months, We've met all kinds of uh, professors and graduate students who work in our labs. And uh, as we were sitting down, we kind of thought, oh, maybe we should have a month to feature the other people who work around this building who aren't necessarily just students or, or professors. And, and we thought, why don't we, why don't we feature some of kind of the staff of the labs, like some of the technical staff, the technicians. And, and so that's where I started out here was, uh, was actually as, as a technician in 1999. So when you throw that embarrassing old picture up, um, you know, I was, uh, I was hired in 1999 by Dr. Dixon. So he's a professor with the University of Manitoba. And in that picture, you saw uh, Julie, she was a, a master's student in the lab. And uh, Jim Howe, Jim was a PhD student in the lab when I, when I first came on. Um, so, you know, in our discussions that, that people might have seen on YouTube or, or live, we've met kind of, oh, there's professors, there's students doing the work. But technicians are a real key part of uh, uh, every single lab here and pretty much every single lab everywhere. They actually, you know, their job is they work for the lab and, and they work to support everybody in that lab and the work that they do. And uh, exactly. I mean, you would know this too. I should say that you, you've you held a technical position too in, in your yeah. past before you joined the bio lab, correct? Yes, it is a very common job that people get when they graduate with a biology degree, chemistry degree, some sort of, you know, science degree. Um, you can do be a tech after your uh, undergrad degree. And sometimes you can even hold full-time tech positions, casual tech positions. And they're really the ones that are sitting at the bench doing all the science. Yeah, and it, it's, it's, it's a really neat position because you kind of get to know everything that's going on in the lab. Um, what a lot of the students that we've talked to in these meet a scientist chats, you know, they kind of have their own specific project, right? Like they have their, um, you know, their their boss or the, the the professor who runs that lab will will kind of figure out, oh, here's all the different projects that are part of our big lab goals and our big lab hypothesis, and then each student kind of has their own little project. But the technician's job is really to be involved in all of those projects. Sometimes, and it depends, like it really depends lab to lab. Some technicians have their own projects. their very own specific things that they're told to do by whoever's running the lab. But a lot of the time technicians are there to support those, those students. I, I can remember back to my time as a technician, um, it was my job and, and a technician's job to really understand how to do the science, right? Because you, you end up with, um, with master's students, you know, people coming into the lab who maybe have never worked in a lab before. And, they, and they've got this project that they have to figure out, how do I actually do this, right? How do I actually do the stuff that happens on the lab bench 
um, to, to actually get my project going and, and to do the experiments I need to do. And, and so that's really the technician's job is to support everybody in that lab, help experiments run, help troubleshoot. It's a, it's a really multifaceted job. And I, like I said, very different lab to lab. Definitely. And depending on the lab, you become the expert sort of in that field on what techniques you need to use. So if you work in a heart research lab, you learn heart anatomy, how hearts work, what kinds of little things are in your heart, molecules, chemicals, whatever, and then how to actually observe and record uh, stuff from these hearts. Just like, uh, so that's what you did. You worked in the heart research lab, right? Yeah, so when I, um, like my story is kind of funny. I don't know if it really works this way anymore, but uh, like I grew up in, in Southern Ontario and, and came out here when I graduated and, and my parents lived here. And uh, I did, I'd graduated from a de- with a degree in, in life science and that, that was my interest, right? Like I, I really liked how health science and how bodies worked and, and understanding how disease works. And I kind of came out of that degree, not really knowing what I wanted to do. Did I really want to go on and do a master's degree? But my parents just lived down the road here. And I saw this building that said research center on the side. And I just, I actually just sent a paper resume to the building. I just mailed it here. And somehow it came across Dr. Dixon's desk and he just gave me a call. And within a couple of weeks, I was, you know, even pretty much around when that picture was taken, um, I was able to just start working. And, and, you know, I didn't know everything, right? Coming into that job, I didn't know everything about heart research. So, you know, no matter what job you have in the lab, whether you're a technician, whether you're a master's student, whether you're a research associate, you show up in these labs and you don't always know. So you, it does, doesn't matter what your job is in the lab, you have to be ready to learn, right? Like you have to be interested in learning, you have to be curious. And I think, um, you know, Ian and I really came together. He gave me so much freedom to, to learn and apply my own interests and my own, um, my own curiosity to the job. So if there were ideas that I had, I could come to him with them and say, hey, these are neat things that maybe we could check this out. Um, not all lab technician jobs are like that. Some lab technician jobs are, here's your job, do this and do it over and over and over again. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's an interesting job where there's so many different possibilities uh, that you can learn some skills and build this kind of toolbox of skills that really you can take to any other lab um, anywhere you go. Exactly. So when you go to school, you kind of learn what you might be doing if you work in science and gather the tools to understand what's going on. But once you get that first job, it's like, oh my goodness, I don't actually know anything. And then you just learn it on the job. Yeah. And and that's like any job, right? You could be, you know, whether we're talking about working in a lab or working in a mechanic shop or, uh, you know, working in a restaurant, um, so much of your learning goes on, you know, on the actual job itself. Um, so, you know, even though you take your, all these degrees and everything else, there's, there's always things to learn. And, and that's, that's the beauty of, of working here. This is why I'm still here, you know, 20 years later. Um, the beauty of this building is, is there is a real, um, and I felt that from day one, there, there's a real family kind of feel to it, that people are here to work together, even though often our labs are kind of competing for the same pool of money, um, there's, there's still a, a real desire to share and to learn. And whether that, whether you're a technician or whether you're, you know, some surgeon who's coming and working in the lab, um, that sharing and that, and that, uh, that ability to work together is, is really what, what has kept me here that long, right? Yeah, and definitely the relationships that you make when you work in these sorts of labs. Like I'm sure when you started here, you didn't know a single person. And then you met a bunch of friends. I think you met your wife here. Is that correct? Yeah, she was actually a lab technician right around the corner on the third floor. So she's a technician too. And, and she's taken that job to many different places as, as well. And, uh, you know, it, it's a great job for people who just who just love science and uh, and like working, working with others. It, and you can make a, a real career out of it, right? Um, it's, uh, it's something that I could still be doing. There's lots of people here who have been technicians in this building for 30 years, right? Um, and think of the amount of projects and the amount of learning that, 
as a technician working in one lab, uh, you can get to see for years and years and years and years. And I, I really like that kind of aspect of, of actually being staff in a lab, right? And, and maybe people watching don't necessarily realize, you know, a lot of the students that we see here that we've met over our over our ch over these chats, um, you know, they they might only be here for three or four years, and then they'll move on to another lab, which is which is a big part of training and learning. But uh, but yeah, there's other jobs out there where you can be part of that lab for years and years and years, and part of all these different experiments and all these different projects. And and I've seen there's so many technicians here who who get that recognition too. I, I, I've always really liked that part of uh, the culture in, in, in this building is um, a lot of technicians, they get their names on the papers because they do the work too, right? Like they're in there every single day doing the work. So we know that with a technician job, you can pretty much learn whatever you want, a bunch of skills, become an expert in that field, make really amazing relationships, just like your relationship with Dr. Ian Dixon. You guys have been friends for over 20 mm -hmm. years, but let's get into the nitty gritty part about what being a technician is. So what were some of the best parts about being a technician? Like, what, what, like is it the job? Is it the people? Is it the research yeah i mean for me it's always the people like i, I love I, I love the people i work with now i love uh, and i love the people i've worked with here throughout my career um the people for sure the constant learning right i think that's why anyone gets into science uh and gets into you know academic research uh that we do around here is is because you love to learn and uh and that's the thing you can come in and learn new things every single day um, and when things go right over time, we get to learn things that nobody in the world has ever learned before. And, and as a technician uh, working in labs, you get to be part of that all the time, right? And, and multiple times, whether it's your personal project, you're still part of those things. Um, and that, that I think was always the, the most exciting thing for me. Now, obviously I'm not a technician anymore, right? I've, I've changed my, I've changed my path as, as I followed what I was interested in. Part of me was uh, maybe I'm not so interested in doing bench work for the rest of my life, like doing bench science. And and part of me chose to take a different path, right? Um, but it's uh, you know you find what you're interested in and you follow that path. Mm -hmm. And the interesting part about Steve's previous job as a tech, he mentioned that Ian Dixon had instilled this curiosity into him, and that's super amazing because. Steve is the director of our youth bio lab, and he does the exact same thing for every single kid that walks into the lab. He's like, what do you want to learn? All right, let's figure it out together. Yeah, a big part of it. And, and Ian, as a, as a mentor to me, I mean, he's really my my big mentor um, coming up through here was, was, yeah, just showing the curiosity that you come in with, showing the passion for learning that you come in with. Um, and, and giving people the freedom, the freedom to learn, right? The, the, the freedom to, to be involved and, and chase down new ideas. And, and that's, uh, like I say, I think that's part of the culture around here. And we're very lucky to have that at the research center. Um, mm -hmm. and that's part of what kind of pushed me along my path is, oh, well, what are you interested in doing and, and how can you make that happen? Right. And, and that can happen in any lab. Exactly. So there are really great things about being a tech but also to any job, there are its challenges. And I know for me, I like doing the research. I hate writing about it. So that was one of the challenges that I had. What about you, Steve? Yeah, for sure. Um, now, I like writing. Um, I've always liked writing. And, and that's actually something that E and I came together. He's a great writer when it comes to writing, um, when it comes to writing papers, when it comes to writing grant applications. Like a lot of people think, oh, writing grant applications, that's got to be a terrible part of the job. But some people are really, really good at that. And I, I think I, that was something that I realized working as a technician, I got to be involved in some of those things. And, and that's not you know, that's not a part of your formal training as you go through university. Um, but I got to be involved in putting grants together and helping write papers and helping sort out figures for papers to make pretty pictures and things like that beyond just the, the bench work. So, you know, there are things like that that you, you do get to be involved in. Now, as a lab technician, you know, it's not all fun and games and it's not all like, let's learn and, and have fun learning all day. Um, as a lab technician, you're also responsible for 
um, you know, keeping that lab running, right? Um, mm -hmm. To support those projects. I mean, we talk about keeping a lab running, um, you know, it's, there's a lot of those behind the scenes kind of things that when um, a master student or PhD student comes in in the morning to do their experiments, you've got to make sure things are there and ready for them. So whether that's making solutions and making sure that, uh, you know, the bottles are full in the fridge when someone just left a little bit, sometimes those jobs end up in the technician's lab, right? Um, <laughs> doing things like safety inspections, right? Like we have to make sure our labs are safe. We have to make sure it's safe for everyone to, to work in. Um, those things are often a technician's job. So coming down and, and stocking and supplying, like when I started that job, I like, I didn't know how to order all these crazy things that we use in a lab, but you have to familiarize yourself with, uh, with things like that as well. So a lot of that comes down to the technician's position too, because they're the one who's there all the time, right? Like they're the one who is, uh, who's maybe been doing this for 10 years and uh, it's their job to make sure things are stocked and things are ready to go um, for people's experiments and, and for everybody in the lab. So, you know, that's not necessarily the most fun part of the job, but, uh, but making sure that things go smoothly and seeing things go smoothly uh, is, is always great, right? Like that's, that's good no matter what job you're doing. Definitely. So what you're saying is as a tech, you're doing the research, you're making relationships, you're making solutions, you're buying stuff, you're making sure all your safety is up to date. Not many people know, but like in a lab, you have to do a ton of like safety protocols. I mean, it makes sense. Sometimes you're dealing with dangerous things and you have to do these every single year. Yeah. And the other part I think too, and the part that I kind of like is, uh, you know, you're responsible for keeping all this equipment running. So when I started here, I was, I guess, what was I, 22 or 23? Um, you know, I didn't know anything about fixing microscopes or, uh, you know, keeping rotors clean for your centrifuge or anything like that, right? Like that's not stuff they, they train you, they teach you in, in university or in high school. Um, but that's a big part of the job too, is actually being able to, to troubleshoot equipment, being able to figure out how to fix things or who to call to fix things when things go down. Um, you get to learn all those things on the job too. And, and that's, a, that's a key part of, uh, of technical ability is, is knowing how to use the tools and knowing how to, uh, to fix the tools when, when things go wrong. Exactly. And I think being someone in science in present day, way easier than someone doing science 30 years ago. We have a Google you can look up anything. <laughs> it's, it's really true. And I, I'll tell you a story, like even, um, so when I first started in Ian's lab, we had a really nice setup. We had a nice uh, fluorescence microscope, but it still had a film camera attached to it. So if you did a whole bunch of, if you did a whole bunch of experiments, you could have these cells maybe that you'd been working on for, it could be months, right? Like months leading up to this point, where you stain the cells and you put them under the microscope, on that microscope was still a film camera. So we would just have to take pictures of our cells, of, of whatever we're trying to publish, and hope that it was in, you know, hope that everything was turning out right. There was no digital camera with a screen on where you can get everything in perfect focus and snap 100 pictures and take the best one. Mm -hmm. You'd have to take pictures, then you'd have to take that film. I don't, for the kids out there, you've never, you, it doesn't even mean anything to you anymore. Like film, it, it was in your camera. We'd have to take that film down to LabWorks downtown because it was slide, special slide film. Because, you know, again, kids out there, there were these things called slides that you'd have to put in a, the projector that slides around and projects it on the thing. Like how much things have changed in the last 20 years, even just little things like that. And now like we've got a microscope over here that has an iPad on it. You just press the buttons and it takes your pictures, right? Um, to see how things change and to adapt to how things change. Um, that's the job of the lab technician too. And I, I should say also, you know, there's many paths to that, to that job. Like I came to it with a, you know, a bachelor of science uh, from university. Um, but people have taken many, many different paths to the, to the technical job. And a lot of people, a lot of kids that come into our lab, um, that was never me necessarily as a kid. But I, I see that in kids all the time is some kids really gravitate towards the technical stuff, right? Like using the equipment and, uh, and doing the stuff on the bench. 
Um, I was always more of the, you know, think about things and uh, think about how to share and learn. Um, but a lot of people really, really do gravitate towards that technical side. And, and there's lots of paths to that too. Um, I've worked with lots of technicians over the years who've come to our building from, uh, from Red River, where they actually have technical programs where you could go in and learn how to do all these things. I didn't get to learn that at university. And all of a sudden I'm throwing in having to use all these tools that I've never years, used before. Um, but uh, you can, there's many paths through technical training programs where you can go learn how to use all this stuff and walk into a lab and know how to do it, right? Like there's, uh, there's lots of ways you can get there. Yeah, even uh, for those of you that may not know, when you go to university, you can do a co-op, which is sort of like a work placement while you're doing your undergrad. And they usually offer up tech positions so you can get experience doing these types of things in many different labs, like brain labs, plant labs, heart labs, chemistry labs and, <laughs> and uh, get that experience while you're doing your undergrad. And when you graduate, then you kind of have an idea of what's going on. Yeah. And, and I, I encourage kids and, and, you know, it's, it's sometimes it's hard to get those kind of placements and, and get into labs and do stuff. But I always encourage kids, like if you can get any lab experience, go do it. Right. Um, mm -hmm. Or anything. It doesn't matter what, you know, whatever you're interested in, if you can actually get experience working in, um that type of workplace right um and see who the people are and how it works that really opens your eyes more than anything um the one course that i took and i, and I think probably it's part of the one course that got me in here that got me the job in the first place um when i was at university was i was able to take a, a two-week and it was full days it was for a, you know for a full credit um, that was just lab work. And it was working with a lab, like with a biology lab, doing molecular biology, like learning how to do the DNA work, hands-on, running a little project over a couple of weeks. And that was one thing that opened my eyes to, man, this is super cool working in a lab with these people um, who are all working together in many ways. And it's kind of crazy and there's a million moving parts, but you really got to see what it was like working with a group of people who are all working towards the same kind of goal. And that was the one thing that made me really interested in, in that kind of work. And I think even as I came in for my interview for this job for as a technician, um, being able to say, hey, I've, I've kind of done these things in a lab and I'm really interested in it, right? I, I think for anybody, it's that interest. And especially in science, if you're curious and, and want to learn more, that gets you in the door, right? A lot of the time. Exactly. Like they don't really tell you all of the opportunities that are out there. There are a million, but you have to look for them yourself most of the time. And when yeah. I was an undergrad, a professor was like, Hey, want to work for me over the summer? And I was like, what do you mean work for you over the summer? Yeah. And that's where I had gotten my research experience. And then I worked for him for another year and then I moved on to a different lab and now I'm at the youth bio lab. <laughs> yeah. And, and it's just, it's, it's talking to people. It's being open to new experiences. It's, it's, you know, there's a little bit of being a little courageous and, and uh, approaching your professors when you're in uh, or your instructors when you're past high school and, and moved on to post-secondary um and just showing that you're curious I, and a lot of people really respond to that mm -hmm. and it might be scary in the very beginning being like i don't know a single thing i only know the theory behind it not actually the doing of it but a couple days they train you on everything and you're like oh these big machines that cost like hundreds of thousands of dollars they're actually very easy to use and i'm not scary at all no, and, and I'll tell you the one thing I think back, one of the other things I think back on often, um, you've met Mark up in uh, Ian Dixon's lab, Mark Natowich. Uh, Mark's been here longer than I have, and he's super smart. He's like, he's well, he has his PhD, but he knows how to do everything. And he learned it all 40 years ago. You know, think back to what I was doing 20 years ago. He learned it all 40 years ago at the molecular science, when molecular biology was really just coming up so he learned it from the ground up and he knows more than anyone i know about uh you know the technical parts of of molecular biology about doing really good solid bench work because he's understood it from the ground up. but i remember him saying to me very early on when i was a technician 
and I was trying to do something and it just would not work, right? It just, it just would not work, would not work, would not work, would not work. And I was getting super frustrated. And I remember going to Mark with my problem and just saying like, Mark, how do I figure this out? This is driving me absolutely crazy. And Mark said to me, just like, Steve, I have screwed this up more times than you have ever even thought about it or attempted it. You know, you could keep failing for years and you still wouldn't fail as many times as, uh, as I had, right? And, and that was one of those things that, hey, here's a guy who knows how to do it all, but he's screwed it up a million times too. And, and that's, that's part of the learning process. And I was like, okay, that gives me the courage to try again, right? Mm -hmm. um and th and that's that's what you have to be ready for when you when you jump into into science and into working in a lab is there's a lot of failure involved in success exactly even some of the projects we do with students at the youth bio lab we're like we oh. know this works it has worked many times and then all of a sudden just nothing happens or right. something doesn't work and we're like well, you know, these things happen. And it's an important thing to teach students at the time. Research seems super, super glamorous. And like, it is glamorous when things work, but sometimes they just don't. And, some, and there's no reason for it. Sometimes when you're doing things, you really just have to hold your breath and just hope it works. Yeah, and, and I mean, as, as the technician's job, and, and we'll meet some more technicians over the next few weeks from around the building. Um, in the technician's job, it's, you know, you're a part of all, a lot of those failures, right? As, as people are learning new things, but you also get to be there. Like those people like Mark, uh, and there's many others around here who have been with their labs for many, many, many years. It's, it's those technicians, those, uh, those people who, who have failed a million times, those people make everyone else's job so much easier, right? Because they have been through all those failures and they can bring all that lab experience. So if you're the new master's student who's never done any of this and you're walking in the door of that lab, there's the Marks and the Roberts and the Terrys who we'll meet next week. Um, there's all those people who have so much experience um, in doing things wrong and, and figuring out the right ways to do things um, that those people are there for you. and and and. I, I don't think technicians ever get enough credit. Um, even when they do get credit, I still don't think they get enough credit for all that behind the scenes work, all those behind the scenes failures and, and uh, all the support that they give um, to all the success that, that people have, right? Mm -hmm. Techs are our favorite jobs. And when you become a tech, you can be a, a tech for 30 years or it can just be a stepping stone to get you somewhere else you want in your life. I know a bunch of techs who have become a master's and PhD students. Oh, for sure. Gone to medical school, dental school. Some are, be, are like, you know what? I'm kind of over it. I'm going to go to real estate school. You know, <laughs> that sort of thing. Yeah, it's it's a good way to uh, to jump into it and, and to see if you like the work. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's work like any other work, right? Like sometimes it's you realize this isn't for me and maybe there's another angle uh, that I can take on it. Like, that's where I am, right? That's where you are right now. Like we're, and, and you know, you're on a path. I'm, I've, I kind of figured I really like the, the teaching and learning part of science. That's my favorite part. And, and that's how I ended up, uh, you know, taking this path, right? Exactly. Well, thank you, Steve, for joining us. I have one more question for you before I let you go. Do you have any advice for our young scientists watching today? I think I'll just, I'll repeat some of the things I said er, earlier is, is, you know, as you're, if you're interested in science, like that was me as a kid, that was me in high school was, I really like science. I really like life science, right? I really like uh, learning about how the body work. I think it's the most amazing possible thing that uh, how our bodies work, how our bodies can live healthy for 80, 90, a hundred years, right? I think that's so fascinating. Um, I came up as a kid thinking, I like science. And I went into science and university, just still kind of liking science. I wasn't sure where I'd end up with it. But uh, for those out there watching, and maybe you're sitting in grade 12 and thinking about where you're going next year and, and, and where you're going after that, is, uh, is just really think about what are you interested in, right? Like what really interests you? And, and if you've got something that interests you, whether that's science or whether that's dance or whether that's music or uh, math or physics, um, 
stay interested and stay curious and share that curiosity with people and and uh, and seek out those people who are doing the things that you're interested in. I was lucky enough to meet Ian upstairs and and we're very similar people with similar interests and, and a similar passion for for the job. And if you get out there and talk to people, which sometimes is hard, as much as I love to talk, blah blah blah. I don't love approaching people and talking to, you know, like that's, that's, I have a shyness in that way. So sometimes for me, that was hard, but talk to people. Uh, that's the best, that's in the end, that's the best way to do it is share how curious you are. Um, talk to your professors, um, show interest in what they do because you are interested, right? And, and if you are interested, then you'll end up where you want to be. Um, and you know, you don't have to sign yourself up for one job for the rest of your life. You can move and change. And, uh, as long as you're following what you're interested in. Amazing advice, Steve. Thanks so much. I hope you had a good time being the interviewee instead of the interviewer. Of course. <laughs> awesome. So next week, we are going to talk to Terry, another technician here at the Albertson Research Center, and she's going to tell us a little bit about her job. So make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates, check out our new website at youthbiolab.ca, and follow Youth Biolab on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks for watching, everyone. Don't forget to tune in next week.